Welcome to the Smart Driving Cars podcast, a special edition again. I'm Fred Fishkin, and Alan Kornhauser is in Boca Chica, Texas. Alan, I am on, I am on Boca Chica Beach uh, with Starship uh, booster number, I guess it's nine, uh, ready to go. We were just treated to the stacking operation. We watched Starship live. Uh, be hoisted from its uh, uh, temporary stand up to and mate with uh, the booster section. And it is a gorgeous day here. We are so thankful it was delayed by a day so that we could watch the restacking live and um, await tomorrow's launch. What do you think, Fred? Well, the earliest time for the launch is 8 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern time, right? 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock uh, Central, and I'm down here with uh, Elizabeth and uh, nine of my students for my class, and uh, we are being treated to um, one of a kind. Talk, talk about a class trip. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. I mean, uh, we... Uh, we had to scurry to be able to get uh, uh, tickets. Uh, the, everything was booked, by, of course, by the time uh, uh, SpaceX got um, uh, final permission from uh, the FAA. Uh, we waited until that because, of course, we're risk averse. Once we got that, boom, we tried to make the reservations. I think we got the last seats into either uh, Brownsville or, or Harlingen, which is another 20 miles away, and came in here last night and um, and then got up early this morning, uh, drove down here. The uh, Highway 4 was open uh, today, and uh, there are a number of people here. We said, let's get up early and get here early, and we were treated uh, just as we arrived with the uh, beginning of the lifting operation to put Starship, um, I think it's ship 24, if I have my numbers right, uh, or is it 26, whatever, and mating, and it was just a, a marvelous operation. Terrific. So that is standing 390 feet tall, the largest ever. And you were there for the initial uh, launch, uh, Alan, so tell us what what you're anticipating here. Yeah, well, what we're anticipating is that tomorrow morning we'll get up and uh, about six o'clock in the morning, we'll trudge down the, about the half a mile down the beach from where we're staying at Margaritaville and um, position ourselves on the dunes, uh, not these dunes. We're I'm down here at Boca Chica Beach um, uh, on South Padre Island, where we're going to be uh, tomorrow is really the closest point of which uh, anyone uh, other than SpaceX folks are are permitted to to watch, uh, which is about five miles away that way, and um, and we'll get um, you know two minutes of thrill as the thing launches. Um, I guess in the twenty minute window that they have uh, uh, tomorrow morning to to launch this. Exciting, Alan. Tell our audience again. I mean, we've talked about this, but tell tell them why you are there. Why? You, you you brought your students as well. Well, I mean, we're sitting around in class discussing this and lots of other topics. And um, I just felt, um, my goodness, uh, I had the uh, the pleasure of being uh, witnessing the uh, Apollo 11 launch in 1969. Um, I was already a space cadet at that point, but certainly uh, that gave me an enormous inspiration. And I just looked around the class and I said, geez, you know, 20 years from now, 25 years from now, <clears throat> um, this is this is going to be one of the monumental uh, things you'll look back on and it, it just be ashamed to not witness it if, if we can. So uh, I went around. People thought I was totally crazy, of course, uh, but um, but we made it happen. Um, uh, kids volunteered. Unfortunately, we couldn't put bring the football players that were on our team because they're playing um, uh, uh, Penn uh, tomorrow. And so they couldn't come. Uh, so I have, um, I guess, three football players on my team that, on my class that couldn't come. And uh, a couple other kids, one, one Bryce um, had an exam today. And I mean, how good of a kid is Bryce? He, he decided to stay at Princeton and take his exam, even though I said, I can proctor it. Uh, can't you take it remotely, really? But whatever, he um, wants to do it straight. So we uh, ended up doing that. 
Just terrific. So this experience, like I said, you've been through this before some months ago. Um, some people have called, have called that. In fact, I'm looking at a, a, a Times piece or, or some other headlines that called that a failure. And you would disagree <laughs> I mean, that's, with that. That's so ridiculous. C cut it out. I mean, it was the first attempt. It, it cleared the tower. I mean, come on. I, you really expect that anybody's good enough to do this kind of scale of a of an achievement on on the first try, really. I mean, what would we have to do? Wait, you know, and 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 contemplate it for a hundred years or whatever. You know, you you got to try some things and and learn from it. And I guess they've learned, as you can see on on the on the ship, and and as you focus in on that, the 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 uh, uh, the stage or the separate uh, segment to allow for hot st staging effort. It's brand new. Um, lots of things are brand new on it. The, the whole concrete pad that's over here uh, that they've made so that it doesn't uh, throw up and create a, another gigantic hole. I mean, an enormous amount was learned. They didn't think that that the, that the concrete would collapse under the pressure of the uh, initial launch. But, you know, this is... Um, uh, every time we do simulations, simulations are not a replication of what Mother Nature... And uh, because they're not a replication of Mother Nature, yet every once in a while you have to let her say, hey, you know, this is really what the situation is and learn from it and uh, move on. Right. And so they have made some changes, uh, like you said, uh, to, to the pad itself there. But also, I think there, there's some something called hot staging that they're they're doing something. Different yeah, that's the upper stage can... engines. Right. And and we watched this morning uh, that starship being lifted from the ground. Uh, brought over and then just uh, gingerly placed on that without anybody up there sort of jiggling in it. We're just marveling at, at how good the, the control mechanisms are to be able to just accomplish that operation. Um, you know, this is this is a pretty big thing. Literally. <laughs> Literally <laughs> and figuratively. So... As far as the, the launch is concerned, you you have to be, and everybody else that's not uh, employed by uh, SpaceX, you've got to be like five miles away. That's what you're saying. Yes, uh, it's five miles away. That way is is uh, sort of where we'll be tomorrow. Um, you know, I mean, I guess if we were here, we might get fried. I don't know. It might get a little bit hot and whatever. <laughs> Maybe uh, we're about, I don't know, what are we? We're, I don't know, three football fields away. Maybe um from 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 it right now so uh yeah and this super heavy booster is designed to 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 land to be reusable but i don't think they're they're not going to attempt that this time right oh no they're not going to attempt it you can see the chopsticks up there uh wrapped around the top of the starship uh those are um those are what at some point uh maybe uh both of these uh Entities will come back to this point to be caught and then and reused. Uh, uh, we're probably going to need to wait three or four launches before they actually attempt that. Uh, you can see uh, on the uh, top of the booster, the grid fins. Uh, they still have to really uh, do uh, have Mother Nature have a have a go at what uh, the real uh, control action is of those, as opposed to just what they're simulating. They have a great deal of data from Falcon 9 and the 200 and some landings that they've made. So, so they know how those great fins uh, react uh, to uh, control input. But, uh, but this one, this is a whole brand new ball game. It's a, it's a different booster. It's, it's uh, you know, what is it? Whatever, three times, four times the size. So the, the whole aerodynamics of those uh uh, hypersonic grid fins, uh, not only at, at hypersonic speeds, but it's also at the, at the low speeds when you're basically just trying to uh, to uh, maneuver this uh, to basically come right between those uh, chopsticks and have it be caught. Harder than uh, autonomous vehicles or easier? <laughs> it's easier. It's it's infinitely easier because the only thing you have to deal with here is Mother Nature. You know, if you do driverless cars, you have to deal with people. You have to deal with the crazies. You have to deal with the people who, you know, put cones in front of your vehicle. You have to deal with you know, things that 
are somewhat unimaginable that you know this thing isn't going to to experience you know mother nature is easy compared to people well alan we we thank you for coming on sharing this with our, with our audience and we'll be checking back with you during the launch or right after the launch thank everyone for, yeah. for watching or listening yeah, uh, and we'll tune in tomorrow morning when this all happens. And um, and Elizabeth almost came and joined me, but uh, uh, she's turned around leaving. <laughs> but uh, whatever, we're here. Um, this is um, an unbelievable trip, treat. And um, and I am uh, so happy for my students. Uh, uh, guess what? They're not going to forget this. We're going to call it smart driving rockets from now on. But thank smart you. Smart driving rockets. Well, why not? I mean, whatever. Okay. Anyways, thank you, Fred. And thank everyone for joining us on Smart Driving Cars.